The College of Brockport proudly supports the fine arts and frequently brings in professional artists to coincide with faculty teaching. Artists like Karen Donnellan, who is currently an assistant professor of glass at Alfred University, joined us to offer insight into the basics of glassworking. Her visit focused on demonstrating how to make a glass bowl using a plaster mold. I don't know if anyone's familiar with my work, but I don't really make bowls. But this is, for me, I, I feel like this is what makes, makes the most sense. This is the most sort of difficult thing to cast. Like if you can, if you can create a vessel out of pâte de verre, um, you can pretty much do anything. Other kinds of moulds that like when I teach intro to, intro to casting, I'll usually start with like a sort of open face clay form that's you know for relatively flat or low relief, and then the next project is an organic burnout mould. So they'll they'll like do things like um, you know pretzels and bananas and you know and you can adjust them or like build things together. Someone did a book as well, made a mould of the book, and then that goes into the kiln and gets burnt out. So it's kind of like lost wax, but there's no wax involved. You're actually burning the object out itself. I will say that the, the rigid form, like the steel, can be a bit tricky to pop out of the mould, but if you've got tons of mould release, you'd probably be all right. With clay, you don't need any mould release, you just need it on the board. So, so normally, for almost anything else, or wax, I would only be putting mould release on the board down here. If you, if you dip your hand in and you can't see the colour of your skin, then it's, you know, it's milky enough. So I'm just going to start applying it. Um, if I was doing something like... Uh, wax like a complicated form then I would do a milk layer so I'd make a really small mixture that's much more watery and uh, put it put put it on the first coat and that way you end up with a really clean surface um, that hopefully won't have any air bubbles in it um, never use warm water I know it might feel good but it, you'll, it'll result in a weaker mold consistency as well so try to just use room temperature water for your mixes Students were able to get a hands-on experience during the demo and got a feel for working with glass by applying the techniques they were shown. Frit is a type of glass and frit tinting is the process of changing the color of the glass. This is done by using a fine powder that has been colored by a glass company. When you put your clear glass in, just remember to do a spritz, like two or three spritzes of just plain old water. Then put your lid on and shake it. So I've mixed it up like pure grey powder, no clear at all, um, and, uh, and I'm just going to use a, a brush to, to kind of put it, fit it into those grooves. So, so when you are doing like an inlay, you actually, you want it fairly thick and um, not too much liquid in it. Um, the more liquid you have in it, the more, you know, that liquid is going to evaporate in the firing and then you'll have a looser, uh, uh, you know, less, lower density of glass. Glass doesn't like to be, to go from thick to thin. So if you are doing like dramatic uh, thickness differences, it's, it's highly likely to crack. Artists generally use food coloring to indicate different layers of glass while packing. Once the piece is fired, the food coloring will burn out and what is left is the clear glass. The kiln needs to slowly reach the highest temperature and then slowly cool down. Once this is done, what is left is a beautiful glass bowl. This was a great experience for students to learn something new outside of their classes. The College of Brockport aims to offer similar opportunities in the future to benefit their students.